Alex Paulton, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode of Talking Time Pieces, where we talk about watch collecting and horology. Today, we're going to talk about silicon parts in watches, uh, why they exist. Um, we'll even address some of the criticisms leveled against them and explain how they are made. First off, um, silicon parts in watches are literally what they are called. They're pieces of the watch that are made out of silicon. Now, um, we all associate silicon with electronics because silicon is a semiconductor. Uh, and in fact, I was just recently in Dresden at the Infineon Semiconductor Facility there and got a chance to tour it. So, um, Silicon manufacturing has been around for quite some time, and actually uh, silicon as a semiconductor is being uh, supplanted by gallium nitride and silicon carbide as better uh, semiconductors, but that's a completely different issue, frankly, from uh, watch parts. Uh, a watch part made out of silicon is not an electronic device. It is using silicon as a physical material, and I think that is the aspect that a lot of people miss when they hear silicon parts in watches. They make the leap and they assume that it's an electronic part in the watch when it is not. I've actually had uh, very smart people say that there's a chip in the watch and I'm like, yeah, yeah not really. Um, because it's a physical device made out of silicon. Um, it would be as if you made a piece of glass and carved it into a pallet fork, but it uses Photolithi uh, photolithography, which is the way they make uh, chips. But instead of a nanoscale process, we're talking about a millimeter scale process. So we can make these parts with a tolerance of nanometers uh, in a millimeter micron scale environment, which is the inside of a mechanical watch. So these parts are photo etched into silicon, but they are physical devices, physical pieces of silicon, chunks of silicon. Now, if you see this photo mask, you'll see all of the parts are on it. The mask is uh, flashed onto the wafer as with any kind of silicon process. But as you see, this mask is of physical parts. And then once the uh, mask is flashed and the wafer is etched and we have our final product, there are a lot of advantages. Number one, silicon parts are uh, amagnetic. They're anti-magnetic. They're, they're not magnetic at all. Glass parts have no magnetism, con can't conduct electricity. Now, silicon is a semiconductor. It can conduct electricity under certain circumstances, but that's if you inject an electric charge into it. In this case, like I said, we're just simply using the pieces as um, f physical chunks of silicon in the, in the movement. So, the uh, biggest advantage to this is the anti-magnetism aspect of it. Well, I shouldn't say the biggest. That's one of the biggest. There are really three big advantages. So the first is the anti-magnetic aspect because prior to silicon parts, in order to make a watch anti-magnetic, you would have to put a, a soft iron core inside, like a Faraday cage, to uh, help direct magnetic uh, fields around the movement and um, prevent it from becoming magnetized. However, uh, the soft iron cage aspect uh, protection methodology, that actually is only good to a couple thousand gauss. Um, in fact, the mill gauss, the Rolex, was famously stated thousand gauss. Now, thousand gauss used to be a big magnetic field, but we're in the modern world and you can encounter, casually encounter magnetic fields of thousands of gauss, uh, multiple thousands. and um, a silicon escapement allows a watch to have a, a very high magnetic tolerance. In fact, uh, the Omega escapements, the silicon escapements in Omegas, they're META certified, and that means that they're good to a 15,000 Gauss magnetic field. So anti-magnetism is a big aspect of silicon parts and watches. The second part is consistency. Um, I'm making these, or I shouldn't say I, but the manufacturer of the uh, silicon parts is making them in industrial quantities. Um, yes, a hairspring factory making them out of metal can also put them out in industrial quantities, but we're talking about a, a technology that um, is very new. I shouldn't say very new, it's relatively new. And uh, one of the biggest concerns that people have is uh, availability and 
replace ability and repair ability. The biggest uh, criticism against silicon parts is that they cannot be repaired. They have to be replaced. They say, um, notably uh, Bill Sanders over at Watch Arts Eye, um, he's down on silicon parts because he feels that a good watchmaker could repair a broken hairspring on a, in a metal hairspring on a watch, whereas a silicon hairspring would have to be replaced. But the uh, industrial scale aspect of the hairspring manufacturer uh, ensures that there will be parts for this watch into the far, far future. Uh, I have um, a couple of Accutrons, and I had my uh, Bulova Speed Sonic, which is also a tuning fork-based electromechanical movement, which Omega will not service anymore for lack of parts. There are parts in the environment. I got a watchmaker to uh, repair mine with factory replacement parts. It's just... The replacement parts go into the field, as it were, and uh, when they run out at the manufacturer, there are still locations in the field that have, in some cases, large quantities of parts. You can still get an Accutron repaired today with original parts. Um, so I don't think that that is as big of a criticism as people feel because there will be a lot of these parts in inventory going into the future because of the quantities that they could be manufactured in and the quantities that they are being manufactured in. Um, a smaller secondary uh, issue, to, a positive issue to the silicon parts, not one of the three main parts, so we could say a fourth aspect, is the uh, fact that it's all consistent and uniform. Um, no matter how good the company is, the par hand finished or even machine finished metal parts um, are going to have micro irregularities between them um, as they're finished slightly differently or uh, the burrs are removed slightly differently or whatever. Whereas in a, on a silicon wafer, these, these parts are already at nanometer tolerance and when they're cut out, they're cut out using precision uh, diamond saws, you know, the same kind of saws that they use to slice the wafer up into chips when they make chips. So these silicon parts are also highly consistent. They're exact part to part. Every single hairspring and every single Omega, for example, is the same as the one in the other watch. They're identical hairsprings. They have the near identical performance characteristics. They're easier to uh, adjust out of the factory. They're e they're, they require less maintenance in the field, which is the, other, which is the third point. I know I'm jumping around between the points, but the third biggest point is the uh, lack of need for lubrication in uh, parts that are... Uh, inherently made out of glass. So in the case of, for example, uh, my uh, Zenith El Primero uh, Chronomaster, the escapement is also uh, silicon. And because it's a 10 beat watch, a five hertz watch, the old timey ones that needed uh, higher uh, maintenance intervals because of the high level of wear because of the high beat on the watch. Whereas with the silicon escapement, this watch now has uh, the same reliability or close to the same reliability as any uh, six hertz mechanical watch. Because the, this watch, number one, the parts are, have tighter tolerances. There's less uh, wiggle room and literally. And uh, also, like I was saying, the uh, parts are more uniform, easier to uh, adjust. And uh, also there um, no lubrication needed and uh, yeah, the watch runs longer and more reliably on with silicon parts. That's why companies that use silicon parts like Omega have increased their service intervals significantly on their watches. Or if you look at something like the Powermatic 80 with a silicon hairspring, um, you know, it, 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 the technology is at the high end and in the mainstream. Now, the as I was saying, the negative, the only negative that I've really heard that makes any sense is the aspect of you can't repair these pieces. But as I said, the quantities that they are manufactured in um, make that a moot issue, frankly. Um, and uh, how, like I said, the how is you take, well, when it comes to making the parts, they're made just like a standard photolithography uh, silicon etch, they take a mask and they flash that uh, image onto a wafer that has photo resist chemicals on it. And um, it literally takes a picture of the uh, pattern 
on the wafer. And then they use acids to wash away the parts that aren't covered by the photoresist. The photoresist protects those parts from the acid. And so when you finish uh, rinsing it with this acid, all of the parts that you don't, all the aspects, all the portions of the wafer that you don't want get literally washed away. And all that's left are the pieces that were protected by the photoresist. And then you you know, clean the photoresist off of the wafers and do may, maybe do other things to them. But at the end of the day, that's the basic process. In the case of, of uh, microcontrollers and chips and the like, they do this lithography pattern multiple times, sometimes 500 times to uh, create, sometimes more than 500 times, to create an intricate uh, pattern of three-dimensional complexity on this wafer. But since we're talking about chunks, solid physical chunks of silicon we're taught we're not talk there's no multiple layers involved there are no multiple masks involved um you flash the image of a pallet fork onto the wafer and you etch everything on the wafer a way that isn't shaped like a pallet fork so silicon parts are actually a very good thing for the watch industry in my humble opinion um they're highly reproducible, so there are lots of parts available for the industry to use. Uh, they're anti-magnetic, don't require lubricants, and they're um, consistent, extremely consistent part to part. So with all of those advantages, um, there's, that's the re those are the reasons that silicon parts are uh, becoming more and more prevalent in the watch industry. And there's nothing to uh, worry about with it because it's a mechanical piece. Because to answer the question about um, physical parts being able to replace or not, all you have to do is fabricate a metal part that's the same, uh, that'll fit in the same space as that silicon part, and it will do the same job. You know, uh, that, that um, super watchmaker that would take the broken hairspring and draw it out and bend it or something can take that very same hairspring from a, another watch and have it fit into the space of the uh, hairspring, the silicon hairspring that broke, and uh, that hairspring would perform in the same role if they could all they have to do is get the end point to anchor to the watch frame so silicon parts are not a bugbear there's nothing wrong with them and uh used properly can help a watch significantly and we're seeing it used in the escapements because the drive wheels don't need to be made out of silicon they can be made out of a low magnetism alloy and be and everything's fine the way the uh swatch um powermatic 80 does so that's my uh, explanation about silicon parts. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And uh, until then, thank you for watching. If you liked it, please uh, subscribe and uh, tell your friends. Thanks.